Hi folks, Thibaut Van Dam here with another YouTube video. And for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, I am a DIY singer songwriter and a guitar tutor based in Southeast London. Today I'm very excited to be continuing my video series all about practical guitar and also music theory. I started the series a little while ago. The goal is to consolidate everything you need to know about playing guitar in one place. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, I am starting from the beginner's perspective. So please definitely consider subscribing. It's the best way to stay in the loop. And of course, please like the video if you find it informative and helpful. So today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to correctly fret. And in the last videos I talked about posture, I also talked about guitar anatomy. So those two topics are going to play a role in today's video. So if you haven't seen those, if you don't know what I'm talking about in today's video, please go check those out. I'll put links in the corner, in the description, that sort of thing. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking about correct fretting on a classical guitar. Now fortunately, fretting on a guitar is pretty universal. Assuming that you have frets and you're not on a fretless instrument, and assuming that it has sort of the same kind of form factor, which is this body and so on, you typically would fret in a very similar way. And posture plays an important role because having a solid posture will keep ultimately the neck in a singular position, which allows you, at least when sitting, um, to basically fret in a consistent way, get consistent results. Now, just like the last video I talked about where I was looking at posture, I'm gonna talk about some general guidelines, some important fundamentals of how to correctly fret, things to conceptually try to take on board if you can. And then I'm gonna talk about some physical guidelines, some things to actually look out for when you're actually trying to fret a single fret. Um, which sounds kind of weird, but yes, that. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So going into some general guidelines, things to think about conceptually. The first and probably most important thing to consider is when you look at the actual instrument, you'll see we have six strings. And when we look from the side, you should see that they're hovering ever so slightly above the fretboard. That tiny distance can make a huge difference in the playability of your instrument. So when you look at that, that distance can actually be described as something called action. And when you go to a luthier, or when you, when you go to someone that sells you the instrument, they will set up your instrument for you, or you can pay for it. And setting up the instrument is usually getting everything, like making sure it's working correctly, and that the guitar stays in tune, stuff like that. But it will also be setting up your action. And action, in fact, is something that is a matter of preference. It's usually a subjective thing. Now, some people prefer a higher action because it's more like pushing something down, and you get to feel that. But one of the drawbacks of a high action is actually that the string being higher than the fretboard and the space being larger means there's more variable. So there's more space for you to actually, if you can imagine this is the fretboard, this is the string, you can actually, from the side, you'll have a hard time actually making sure it goes directly down. That's one thing to consider. Now, with that said, I think that low action can be usually better for beginners and actually advanced players. But one thing to consider is if the action is too low, you might notice that when you play certain frets, you'll get a buzz. And it's just because, in fact, the action is too low. So, and in some cases it could be just right. So now that we got that idea out of the way, this is kind of just like a very technical concept. The more general thing we've got to take on board is this idea of equal and opposite force. So when we looked at um, correct posture in last week's video, we talked about this idea that, you know, when you hold the instrument and the instrument rests on your knee, you rest your arm on the instrument, you basically have your arm pushing down and then your knee is basically pushing back up. That's why it's so important your feet are flat on the floor. This idea of equal and opposite force is super important. When we go back to looking at what happens with the frets, when we push it down, you can see I'm applying a force. There's a force going on here. And so something that happens behind the scenes, and this leads me really neatly into some of the physical guidelines to uh, look out for, is that actually people, when they watch guitarists play, they see this happening, right? They see this, and what's going on with the thumb in the back? <laughs> the thumb is playing an enormous role, um, and I think totally underrated. Now, for many people, where to put your thumb is a pretty intuitive idea. But I have had students, some of which, who have basically put their thumb in sort of weird places or at weird angles that basically make it difficult to play. And something that might happen is, you know, this idea of equal and opposite force basically manifests in the idea that when you are holding down a string, you're basically trying to pinch through it. So this is a little bit like any sport uh, that you may have played. If you play tennis, you know, as soon as you make contact with the uh, ball with your racket, you know, you don't just stop, you know, you don't just do boop and then just like put your arm down, you follow through. And this idea is absolutely crucial to guitar as well. 
um, when you push down on the string, you want to basically be pushing as though you're pushing through. That's the kind of force that you'll want. And this may suggest that there's a lot of force coming from the hand, but actually you'll find that it really, it, it doesn't come from the finger rather so much as the hand actually. So when you push, you'll find that your hand, the muscle is sort of at the top of your hand or maybe even your thumb. And then definitely actually your forearm will end up playing a role. Now you may not notice it as much because of course your forearm is so much stronger than the amount of force needed to push down on the string. But if you just look as I fret and I rotate my hand a bit, you might see that like my arm just moves ever so slightly. That kind of force, you can see, it's it's all the parts working together that make it manageable, right? If we depended on strictly our fingers, man, that would be tough. And also, it wouldn't be exact. And then this is where thumb placement plays a large role in correct fretting. So let's just talk about where to place your thumb. When we look at the back of the neck, on some instruments, you might actually see that they have this decorative line. Again, on most guitars, although a lot of components are decorative, that serve a very important purpose, just like the fret inlays. So. If you have this line, it's sort of a guideline, literally, as to where to put your thumb. You want your thumb to be touching it in some way. Now, I found that the way that I place my thumb usually depends on the strings I'm playing. So if I'm playing some of the thinner, higher strings, these, I usually place my thumb lower on the neck to match it. And this might not make sense because you think, oh, your fingers are down here. You want to match it up here, don't you? But you don't. And this actually has to do with the next physical guideline I suggest, which is you want to make sure that your fingers are perpendicular to the fretboard. So just like what I, with what I was just saying, if your fingers are pointed up, then they're actually going to try pushing the strings upwards. And you may try to match that, match that force by placing your thumb here. And if you do that, listen to what happens. The pitch is changing. And we talked about pitch in the last videos, but basically you, you wanna make sure that the pitch is consistent unless you are doing it deliberately. And this is what I'd consider kind of an advanced fretting technique, how to bend the string. And if you do wanna bend the string, then we'll talk about that in a separate video. But this is an important thing to consider. Now, thumb placement's important. And then of course, we wanna make sure that the fingers are perpendicular to the fretboard. The next thing you wanna watch out for is actually what contact the finger, at what point is on your finger is that making contact with the string? Sorry, that sounded really weird. But imagine this. Um, we just talked about this idea that if the finger is pointed like this, we're gonna push the string up. So what do we want? Well, we want it perpendicular, but we want actually the string to be right underneath the tip of our finger. Now, actually I drew a smiley face, but I'll draw another one because it kind of fell away. This is how I explain this to some of the kids students that I have, basically, I draw a little smiley face on my hand and I give that finger a crown. There you go, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there we go. And the idea here is if you can imagine your finger and if you even just touch it right now, that the tip, the, the pads of your finger, I'll call these the pads, that they're soft and they don't offer a lot of structural support for pushing down a string. Now, if you think about a skeleton and the way that actually the bones in your hands are organized, you have these little bones, I think they're called phalanges, right? I'm thinking, don't fail me now, friends. Phalanges, yeah. You have these little uh, bones in your fingers, right? And they're they're like long ways. They do this, basically. They look, I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but they, they, they look like this, you know? They're like little bones and they, and you want to take advantage of the directionality of your fingers, basically. They're pointing, literally, they're going outwards like that. So you want to push like that. And so this is the idea. So when you're fretting, you wanna make sure that you basically are resting the string on the tip of the finger, taking special care not to touch your nail. And you don't want the string touching your nail for the basic simple reason that the nail and the tips of your fingers are made of different materials. Your nail is like kind of this hard material and your, your skin is kind of this soft material. Now, admittedly, you may use your nail, but you might get inconsistent results, especially if sometimes you use your nail and sometimes you don't. Um, now, I find that the one time I'll use my nail to support pushing down the strings is with my index finger when I play D. If you look here, you'll see sometimes that's where the, my nail touches. But what we're really looking for is perpendicular and we want just the tips of the finger. And if I hold down the string really quick and I just give it a good push and I show you where the indentation is on my finger, you'll see it's right on that crown. See? I'm not squashing the face. I just want to take advantage of the tips of my fingers to make sure that I'm getting a really good solid contact. And it hurts less. This is the other thing. You'll get a clearer sound and it will hurt your fingers less. Next, we wanna make sure where in the frets 
we are actually placing our fingers. So the guideline, this is a general guideline, you should always keep this in mind. You wanna be as close to the fret bars as possible. And although we talked about in the last video, I'll show you again. Here we have these metal lines. These are the fret bars. And although the space is between the fret, this whole area, this is a fret. Really, you wanna be as close to the bar of that fret. So this is the second fret bar. This is the second fret, this space here, right? you want to keep your finger as close to that bar as possible. Now, admittedly, this becomes complicated um, when you start looking at chords. If, for instance, you want to fret the D chord, you might see that my index finger isn't right by the bar. It's right here. It's just more comfortable that way. Now, admittedly, that's, of course, fine, but it's something that you want to make sure that you're not going more away from it than you are going towards it. You want to be closer to the bar than you are away from it. So these are some important things to consider definitely when fretting. I think I just about covered everything I hope to talk about. Um, and so try to keep these things in mind. I think the one thing that people usually overlook is thumb placement, which actually leads me to maybe a final point, which I did talk about in the last video, which had to do with posture. But it has to do with thumb placement when you hang the thumb. And I'm going to talk about it again only because I remember when I was in high school, I was doing my first lessons in guitar. I remember that my teacher was not pleased with the fact that I would sometimes rest my thumb here. And even some of my students do this now. And I had to think to myself, like, why is this a bad thing? Why shouldn't someone do this? And in principle, it's not a real problem. It's just what it could lead to, basically. So when you hang your thumb, it's fine. If it helps you in some way to fret something, I don't think it does. Um, and actually, it leads me to another point, another guideline you should look out for, but um, which I'll talk about in a minute. But when you hang your thumb, one of the issues that starts to come into play is this idea, are you carrying the weight of the instrument with the thumb? Because if I asked you to pick up the instrument and move it, you'd probably do this. You'd probably grab it like this, you'd put your thumb around it like that, see? And you'd use your thumb as a way of carrying the guitar. But actually... That's absolutely not what we're trying to do with the fretting hand. The fretting hand serves one purpose only, and that is to hold down the strings on the frets. That is the only thing. So you wanna make sure that, you see this? I'm not using this hand at all to support the neck where it is. Now, the other guideline I want to point out, and this is actually kind of like a fretting uh, trick or, or tip that I sort of came across at some point, which is basically, I found that some of my students had a hard time actually reaching and it was because their thumb was high. And this is another reason why you don't really want to hang your thumb here is actually that when you start to lower your thumb on the back, so you lower it kind of here, something magical happens, which is that your reach for your hand starts to open up. So if you can imagine rotating your hand entirely, look at how much further my fingers can reach. So if you're having a difficult time fretting certain chords like G and your thumb is also all the way up here, there's a reason that's tough because there's a limit to how sort of large your hand is. And if your thumb is doing this and you're trying to do this, well then you can lower it and you can create some space, get some more stretch. And then of course that helps lead into the other sort of physical guidelines to talk about perpendicular uh, intersection with the fretboard and using strictly the tips of the fingers. If your hand is too stretched, that's when you'll start to actually get that angle that we don't want, you know? So these are some things to think about when you're trying to correctly fret. I hope you find this video informative and helpful. Hopefully you'll see that there are chapters if you wanna go back over any of the topics I talked about. And if you did find it informative and helpful, please give the video a like, please consider subscribing. It is the best way to stay in the loop. And thank you so much to all the people that do subscribe. I'll see you at the next video. Ciao for now.